Hello, ECAF 2020. Greetings from Berlin. I'm Florian and I'm standing here together with my colleague Mike Bernd. Hi. And we are really happy to talk today about the co-creation of quality assurance and instructional design standards in open and smart learning environments. This video is just a peak preview of uh, our input we're going to give to the panel on Friday on ECAF 2020, uh, but we hope that it gives you an overview and a brief insight already on what we're working with, what we're working with, with the AI campus. The AI campus in Germany is based on the vision of an AI competent society, and we believe that in order to achieve an AI competent society, we need to work on promoting an AI, AI skills and competencies on a broad scale to get even more people interested in the topic. Our learning platform for artificial intelligence is designed to enable learners to better understand, question and design artificial intelligence. Our work is based on two basic principles. First of all, we develop our own courseware, our own different learning formats as AI campus originals. But secondly, we also believe that we all always need an open mind for what is out there already. So we curate existing AI content, be it courses, videos, podcasts, or others. And um, for doing that, uh, we came together with a project consortium in Germany, which is Stifterverband, the organization that we work for, with the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence, um, HPI from Potsdam, and other partners. Um, that form like the core of the AI campus, but we have many more partners that Mike is going to talk about in just a minute. What we believe as the very first basic um, uh, principle um, for developing open and smart learning environments is you need joint guidelines. And in our consortium, we develop six basic guiding principles that have a lot to do with QA of digitally enhanced learning environments. It starts with interoperability and cooperation. It continues with a focus on the learner, him or herself. It continues with an instructional design that is based on social learning formats, a platform development that is agile, participative, and user-oriented in its design. And of course, as the AI campus, we also want to use AI methods for what we do. Last but not least, really important, openness. Open content, open educational resources, but also open source technologies, in our opinion, are the future of education, but they also need quality assurance principles and they need a joint agreement amongst partners working on digital learning. So who are these partners and what is this learning on the AI campus actually about them? Well, it's all basically about variety. It's, uh, as you said, it's about a variety of formats we are having on the AI campus. It's a variety when it comes to the target groups. We are having students, we have lifelong learners, uh, we have workers. Uh, it's about collaboration. We are collaborating in a consortium. And we are also collaborating with lots of higher education institutions. We are collaborating with uh, startups, with all, these, uh, with all these players, stakeholders. We are collaborating. We are uh, working together to build a platform where learners basically like to learn and love to learn. The love for learning is not only a love for online courses. It's crucial for the QA of the future that we do not only look at the level of courses and curricula. We work a lot with so-called learning nuggets or micro-content. The first nuggets implemented on the AI campus are videos and podcasts, and they stack up to full courses. And we believe there are different quality assurance standards needed for a video. You need to talk about the quality of the, of the, of the camera that you're using. You need to talk about the script that you're writing before. And we actually don't have a script today, but that's another story. You need to talk about the length of a video in order to really support a learning process. And you have other questions when it's about courses, and even more different questions when you talk about modules, when you talk about micro degrees that we are developing together with our partners, or AI micro credentials, a topic of our ECAF panel as well. 
One standard that is really crucial, I mentioned it before, open licenses. It is one of the biggest tasks that we are facing that we are continually discussing with our education and higher education partners which licenses are applicable to the AI content we develop. And we have agreed upon one basic license, it's the Creative Commons um, um, and Buy Share Alike 4.0, which allows for reusage of all content developed. And that is a discussion that has just started in the context of higher education. So, the AI campus, how does it look like? What does actually happen on it? There's basically lots happening. As I said, when it comes to the format, you can do everything. You can watch videos, you can uh, uh, participate in quizzes, you can soon uh, participate in lab experience, you can go to the next step if you like. You can have courses, you can really participate in, in courses with a high workload compared to seminars and offline settings, for example. We have mixed settings as well uh, at the AI campus where, where our partner higher education institutions basically using materials in their offline setting and bringing and merging it together in a unique uh, instructional design. And by this, uh, we are having scenarios which more and more universities can use in the future. I think that is what you would also call smart learning environments. Yes. Learning environments that think about new formats, new opportunities that you can find in the digital sphere, but bringing it together with innovative learning environments that are offline thus forming an ecosystem that is also quality assured to a certain extent, but that enhances and strengthens lifelong learning. But coming back to our topic of quality assurance and instructional design principles, Mike, you as the person being responsible for it, maybe you want to like to share with us some of the key aspects of what we do with QA and ID on the AI campus. Mm -hmm. Maybe you start with the, with the, with the points we, we can see over here, just uh, start by asking the question, who is doing the quality assurance? And for us, it's a centerpiece, who are our main stakeholders? And of course, our main stakeholders are the learners, the students. And therefore, it's everything we see over here, our, uh, our students are participating in the whole quality assurance processes. So basically, we are having checklists. Uh, uh, which can be filled out uh, by our stakeholders um, uh, uh, due to uh, have uh, quality assurance. Uh, then the cyclical aspect is another point. We not having uh, um, uh, the quality assurance at the beginning or at the end, we are constantly having it because of uh, one main pillar we are seeing in quality assurance and that's further uh, development. We are having over here as well, this can also be seen in our quality assurance life cycle, that the last point always is the question we are asking in the end by experts, uh, our, our students, how can we make things better? And um, yeah, I think what is really important about that are two further aspects. First of all, this further development is not only about the content, it's also about the technologies. We need QA for content, but also for technologies, especially when we look at topics such as micro-credentials. And secondly, we do need guidelines. We believe we have nice PDFs and other guidelines that we give to our partners. But even more important is the process that comes along with it. The guidelines are embedded in a process, are embedded in key account management. You are the key account manager of 10 university partners who develop courses, videos, podcasts with us. So it's more a process than just a guideline, but it is also a guideline, which is important. Looking at these guidelines, Mike, maybe just briefly, what are like two, three central core aspects? Mm -hmm. So the core aspects are really are when we are looking at our uh, instructional design guidelines, for example, there we have a checklist included. This is something like our course developers are doing. And if we see over here, it's really integral that usual things like usual like basic criteria when it, when it comes to instructional design need to be fulfilled. And this is why we decided not to have a traffic light model, for example, what we have in the QA uh, guidelines over here. It's really a decision: is this included in the in the learning provision in the uh, in the uh, in the course or not? And if it's not included, then of course it doesn't fulfill the instructional design. Uh, uh, principles and therefore it needs to be 
revised, reworked. And on the other side, um, when it comes to quality assurance, we have a broader spectrum. Over here, it is really possible to say something is absolutely fulfilled, something, something is still okay, or something is really cr crucial, some, something uh, leads to problems and it needs to be changed. Thanks a lot, Mike. I think very crucial when we ask partners for content on our platform, there are some instructional design principles that have to be fulfilled. There is no gray zone. On QA processes, very often there is a gray zone and we incrementally develop the content, make it better. For example, we, we, we went live in July with our first AI courses and some of them just don't look that good. But the nice design isn't crucial for a good content. So we said it can go live early this year, but we have to rework it and we are further developing it by the end of the year with a design agency to make it nicer. Something that is not obligatory, but that is somewhere in the gray zone of, of making, making learning co content more attractive to learners. And overall, to summarize, I believe it's about an iterative review and development process, Mike. Just to summarize, what does that mean? Yeah, you already saw the, the life cycle, so, but it's, it's only one cycle, but it's really important, as I said, that we have an iterative process. And it means that you have these re uh, review processes, this evaluation process during uh, the, the entire course production and even afterwards, then it's, it, it comes to the curriculum development. This, this means it doesn't stop. It, it, it's, it's, it's sustainable to see that we are constantly working, reviewing, evaluating what we are doing on the campus. And there, uh, collaboration, of course, it's, it's really important, the collaboration with our partners, with our universities, with the startups, with our learners as well. And maybe just one more sentence, uh, what you said, Florian, when it comes to technology and learning and content. We are basically don't see this as two different things. So we see, for example, we want to have some sort of learning on the AI campus and therefore we need some sort of tool. And we try to pick the best tool for this kind of learning and implement it into, uh, into our uh, environment, in, into our ecosystem and this basically makes our learning smart. Our own QA criteria lead to new tools. H5P, very simple but very powerful element that many of you may use in Moodle learning environments. We implemented it in ours because we believe we need quizzes on the learning pathway, we need interactive videos. So out of our instructional design principles and the QA standards, we develop two requirements. Thanks a lot for that, Mike. To summarize, to summarize what we have just briefly talked about, we would like to make six, um, six key learnings from our work in 2020, um, um, like, like more concrete to you. First of all, what I said at the very beginning, before you start to develop an open and smart learning environment, before you start to be innovative, to do anything digital, find the right partners and agree on guiding principles. It is really important that you agree on user-driven development. You don't only write it down, but you agree on it as a value, which is really important for the further collaboration. That you agree on, for example, open standards, and that you agree on social learning formats that are crucial in our humble opinion. Looking at the learners, it is really important that different learners need different formats and different formats need different QA processes. It's a different QA process, process if you only develop a video. It's a different QA process if you develop an open lifelong learning course. And it's even more different if you want to make recognition possible. We work a lot on online and blended examination at this moment, but it's important to focus and really decide based on the learner analysis, do these learners need that sophisticated examination or not? And that's a continuous process as well. Also, open educational resources, in our opinion, are key to the future of education and of digital education. And we believe there is more agreement needed, there are joint standards needed that should also be part of QA in the European higher education area. My QA is more than just guidelines. What does yeah, that mean? Yeah. It's really the interaction between all players. It's, it's, uh, it's between uh, our, our course producers, for example. It's close contact to our learners. 
it's always about constant exchange to make the product we have better and better. And that's, that's really a, a point we always need to keep in mind, as I already said. Like, usually, like, lots of people don't think when it comes to quality assurance about further development. We always need to think about how to make things better. And there we need to have collaboration and interaction with our other players and stakeholders. And that comes together with openness and transparency. Sometimes higher education is not that much about transparency. Our work has to be, because otherwise we wouldn't be innovative. And otherwise we wouldn't make the recognition of digitally enhanced learning possible. So, be transparent. Really try it out. If you have a nice atmosphere with your higher education partners, we know and we see it every day. Um, recognition, QA standards and high quality content is possible. And last but not least, I believe, listen to your learners and listen to the teachers. And um, high quality learning is based on an iterative, con continuous development process with continuous feedback loops. We profit a lot from that. We learn every day how to make our content better. And we hope to get into discussion with you and how to ensure best quality assurance standards and instructional design principles for the education of the future. Greetings from Berlin and thanks a lot.